When I first got to BYU, it was a huge culture shock to say the least. Provo culture has its own lingo and phrases that they use, and one of the first ones that I learned was sweet spirit. At first it sounded a little weird to call someone that, until I found out what it meant, and that is what I'm going to talk about today. Since the church doesn't have a topical guide for Mormon phrases, I will do my best to define what a sweet spirit is. A sweet spirit generally describes a young man or woman who is an active member of the church, but has characteristics which might not make them dating material. This can be due to physical appearance, lack of social skills, or inexperience in dating. I would hear this phrase quite a bit at BYU and most of the time it was used as a joke to tease friends. However, sometimes people will use it as a veiled insult or as a passive aggressive way of indicating someone isn't good enough to date them. I think there are a couple of reasons that members of the church use this phrase. Mormons don't like insulting other people, at least not directly. Mormon culture is kind of like the famous southern hospitality you hear from people that have visited the south. They say that people from the south are kind, open, and welcoming. But if you do something to make them angry, they won't usually curse you out, but instead they'll say, bless your heart, which translates to, you're an idiot, but you can't help it. Mormon culture is similar in that insults are okay as long as they don't appear aggressive, but are instead more docile or inoffensive. Another reason I think Mormons use this phrase is because Mormons truly are a peculiar people, and I mean this in a good and bad way. Most Mormons know the basic commandments that they need to follow, like no alcohol, no tea, and no Democrats. But some Mormons take these commandments to the extreme. For example, at BYU there were students that would refuse to watch PG-13 movies. This was usually because they felt these movies were too violent or sexualized. Which I think is interesting because the Bible is super violent and the book of Song of Solomon would make your mother blush. <laughs> so what do these sensitive Mormons watch instead? Disney movies. There was a sizable population of college-age Mormon students that would watch just mostly Disney or other animated films and quote them all the time, which drove me crazy. In my opinion, not only was this weird, but it was unhealthy. Because if all you're mostly exposed to life is Disney's skewed perception of reality and relationships, chances are you are going to have unattainable expectations for yourself and others. Because life isn't a Disney film, unfortunately. And this is really just a symptom of a larger issue, which is known as the Mormon bubble, which I will probably discuss in a future video. So after watching this, you might be thinking, hey, I might be a sweet spirit. What can I do to change and more from a sweet spirit to a sweet snack? Oh yeah. My biggest advice is to do things outside of your comfort zone and do new things, obviously excluding breaking the commandments, of course. Diving into new situations with different people is probably the fastest way of gaining experience and social intelligence. This will most likely be difficult to do at first since it's scary and hard trying to do new things and interacting with new people face to face instead of over the phone like we've gotten used to. But you can just take it a step at a time. Maybe one day you'll try a food that you haven't tried before. Or maybe you'll read a book that is outside of your interests. Or you'll talk with that guy or girl that isn't in your friend group. Look for opportunities that will stretch you either socially or mentally. The more you do this, the easier it gets, and the more you'll look forward to trying out new things. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and remember to subscribe to continue watching more videos, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.